Why political new music? So my lecture is standard arguments against political aesthetics, especially in music. That's what I've collected from a lot of discussions. And then I will give, or I'll try to give answers to these standard arguments. So what are the standard arguments against political aesthetics, especially in music? First, music cannot make political statements. Or one could say, music is not political. Or, music could make political statements, but only in a didactical way, in a short-term way, since politics is uh, mostly <laughs> short-term decisions. Next. The artistic community is so homogeneous and already enlightened that political art would be preaching to the choir or preaching to the converted. Next, music is so institutionalized that political art is always bound to it and hence it is self-affirmative. There is no real critique possible. Or, political aesthetics aren't serious, the only goal is to boost the individual career. Or, Political aesthetics functionalize music, it destroys its autonomy, it cries for subsidies and relevance. And last point, political new music doesn't change anything. If you want to do politics, do politics. Anyone here who agrees with one of these statements? Uh, okay, so at least we're not so homogeneous. Okay, my lecture is now the answers. And since these, all these arguments are connected, so my answers are connected as well. First, new music is political. New music is mostly organized in institutions, ensembles, orchestras, festivals, radio stations, um, with might and money, of course, with hierarchies. So you can read Foucault about that, or you could read my text. Institutionen komponieren. Institutions do compose, uh, since all the frame they are creating are already, a, uh, of course, touching the aesthetics uh, and determining a lot of them already. Or like Peter Ablinger says, um, composers, oh, auf Deutsch vielleicht dann, die Komponisten sind nicht mehr so sehr, so sehr die Architekten ihrer Stücke, sondern mehr die Innenarchitekten, aber das Haus ist eigentlich schon gebaut. Mm. To give an example, so I give some examples from, from my work. I was I made a piece uh, in the recent five, last five years, premiered last year. No, this year, no, in January. No, last year. Um, it is the, a concept piece for orchestra, which is the original Bolero by uh, Maurice Ravel, but I rubbed out the melody. Everything that is melodical uh, in that, uh, or melodic in the score, I've rubbed out, that's all. But I thought about this piece for five years uh, to do. So, and I was naive. I was uh, thinking about musically. I was interested. I wanted to listen to that accompaniment. I was really interested. I want to listen to this kind of piece below that famous piece by Ravel. I want to listen to the accompaniment. And only then with rehearsing with the orchestra, I realized this is very political since the structure of the piece is melody and accompaniment. And hence that's in the orchestra First violin, first flute, first trombone is playing the melody, whereas second violin, second flute, second trombone, they are playing the accompaniment. And most of them, of the first players, were really pissed off. And it was first they did not want to play that piece. They said, that's not a composition. That's uh, how could you get money for this and everything. Um, and then they played it, but they said, okay, we will play it, but we don't like it. And imagine it is not only it is a kind of performance and also it is kind of rehearsal situation. Yeah, since yeah, and even in new music, normally this never happens that the first violins for almost the entire piece they don't blow anything. Yeah? They sit in the chairs and they're really like sitting like this uh, in the chair. Get a small impression from the piece from the end. <laughs>
as an example, that um, the politics is the institutional things they are in the music in themselves, um, obvious. Next point, that new music is political because of its situation in society. It is a subsidized form of doing music and of a music which is um, principally different from 99.9% .9 of all other music when I'm speaking about atonal music. Now this is um, theories of uh, my teacher Matthias Spalinger who recently in Contemporary, new music re contemporary music Review there was um, a text by his uh, former student Alistair Zadua who uh, gave an overview of uh, a lecture of Spalinger held in London last year with the title Political Implications of the Material of New Music and Spalinger's point is mainly about atonality and atonality is, uh, in his opinion, is uh, the destruction of meaning and the creation of meaning from scratch, so to say, or in ex negativo from the tonal system. So this is by definition a auto-reflective uh, action and uh, a matter of contradiction as well, since there is meaning which a material which, first of all, has no meaning or only a negative meaning. So uh, in this sense, this is music which is 99, it's different from 99% of all other musics since all other musics um, are traditional in a way that they have a common language which they are using, like tonal, tonal chords, tonal harmonies, or, or, or meter. Then third point, the structural analogy. That's uh, the idea of Theodore Adorno inner musical relationships mirror social relationships. Um, we had this point already in different lectures. So um, the so-called material incorporates history. The 12-tone egalitarianism is related to, or at least can be relate, interpreted with egalitarian political ideas. So I would, this ex example from the piece that was premiered yesterday, in the beginning, this section, I would say, is not only a concrete, physical, energetical thing. Um, I regard my music also a lot semantic, which means um, here this is downfall, runterfallen, but also downfall, niedergang, of, um, a mental downfall, or of the fresse fallen, or, it, or even the political, social downfall could be interpreted with this um, symbolic uh, representation of that idea. I'll come back to this um, later. Mm. Or in this, even this example. So we have two movements, two powers in a struggle with each other. There's this uh, hand which only plays chromatical scales up and down, but the foreground and background, but the foreground and background, they are sometimes in the same direction and the opposite. So this um, is foreground and background, movement and scale, action and basis. So there is semantics of sound. No, no neutrality of material, no total abstraction. Mm, take the semantic of style, for example. Style is a soci sociological, uh, a ma is sociological, a matter of identity and identification, of gathering things and interests together of certain social groups or historic points in time. Um, to give an example from a music theater piece uh, from, five, from six years ago, Fietz Hören TV, where I made uh, a list of metal styles. Die funktionale Ausdifferenzierung der Gesellschaft. Das hier ist Black Doom Metal. Black Metal. Dark Metal. Death Doom Metal. Death Metal. Doom Metal. Doom Core Metal. Throne Doom Metal. 
Okay, it takes, uh, I think, five minutes of 45 different metal styles. Mm, yeah, I called that piece Introduction to the Sociology of Music. That's the title of a text uh, of Theodore Adorno. Speaking more generally, so autonomy of music was uh, big term and still discussed a lot. Um, and the autonomy of music came up in the 19th century. So compared to music, for instance, of Johann Sebastian Bach, who was a servant of the church, or other music was servant of, um, of, of monarchy, of feudal, feudal courtly systems, that Beethoven was the composer who wrote for music's sake. This music has to be heard for its own sake and not being uh, any service uh, for the background or whatever. But music is, of course, that was uh, an important uh, idea, the autonomy of music. But music is not that autonomous, uh, which becomes obvious more and more. I have four points. Adorno's structural analogy of, uh, of the music, of the so-called material. Um, uh, what was his, this quote? Um, yeah, the less the artwork is about society, the more it contains about society. This is Adorno. Then the semantization. Here you can refer to Nietzsche or Nelson Goodman or even to, compu to um, computer pioneer Claude Shannon. Mm. In your music, it's quite obvious that the titles of the pieces nowadays have much more semantic names than in traditional music. Traditional music was symphony or sonata or piece, whereas now much, much more semantic titles are being used. Um, here a quote of Friedrich Nietzsche, which fits very well to what um, Enno Rudolf already talked about. So people who are kind of retarded in uh, listening to music, listen to it only formalistic, whereas the advanced listeners understand everything symbolic. That's uh, quite uh, elitist spoken, but uh, well, that's Nietzsche. Mm. Or Nelson Goodman, postmodern theorist, me, he explains that a gray painting is not only gray, but it is, it is an exemplification of grayness. Yeah? So we do not only see colors, we do see terms, we see concepts. Or even you could uh, refer also to computer philosophy. Uh, Claude Shannon, already in the 1930s and 40s, described that a computer is not only a calculator, but a processor of symbolic logic to make it uh, very brief. I mean, the computer is a calculator. It's only zeros and ones, but all the interfaces we are using, programming language, you're writing words at least, yeah? not only um, calculations. And now it is, of course, when you upload a piece on, on, of music uh, on, on, say, on YouTube, then you give it tags. Yeah? You give it certain uh, names that people find it. So we have to deal with um, with words, with semantization of music. Then the media aura, um, the, therefore you could refer to Kittler and all body philosophy, that there is no neutrality, there is the materiality, the body of the instruments, the bodies of performers and the bodies of the listeners. Uh, I think four years ago there was a, a piece premiered of Brian Fernio here in Darmstadt for electric guitar and vibraphone. And to me, it was totally awkward since the, was the electric, electric guitar was used to do the structures of Fernieho music. But hey, it is an electric guitar that has come from a tradition of rock music. Um, you cannot ignore completely that history. It's, you could also um, remember the criticism of Lachenmann on the use of the cowbell in Gruppen of Stockhausen. For Stockhausen, the cowbell is also just one parameter in his whole setup, whereas Lachmann says, come on, a cowbell is a bell a cow normally is wearing. <laughs> yeah. So that's a met that me the aura, the aura of the instruments um, is a semantic thing. And institutionalization. Mm, the frames are defined. So this uh, slogan of anything goes in postmodern modernity, I would always say, well, Schön wär's, uh, would be nice if anything would go, but in, in fact, uh, there's so much artistic freedom is kind of castrated by, by inter institutional frames. We talked about this this morning. And for me as an artist, at least I want to incorporate this sometimes in my piece of art and take that risk to, to 
Make It Visible, so two years ago in my music theater piece Audio Guide, uh, premiered here in Darmstadt, piece which took seven hours without break. And after about six hours of the late night, I included a talk with a curator. He's also here again with Stefan Fricke. Let's get a small impression from that. Da sollte der Künstler sich auch die Kuratoren aussuchen, mit denen er zusammenarbeitet. Das ist ja nun mal eben gerade nicht so. Ja? So ja. ist es halt nicht. Wir sind ja auch Nutten. Ja? Wir gehen sozusagen Natürlich. auf den Komponistenstrich und warten, bis halt die Kuratoren vorbeifahren. Ich winke da halt so und dann hält mal einer. Dann muss ich einsteigen. Was macht es aus einem Menschen, wenn man so viel Macht hat? <lacht> He's never asked this question normally. Ah, yeah. come. <laughs> Welchen Kompositionsauftrag bereust du am meisten, den du vergeben hast? Also du triffst also gute Entscheidungen. Nö, nee, würde ich nicht sagen. Also mich freut das auch, dass einer jetzt noch mal wieder einkaufen gehen kann. Ne? Also dann ist das Stück vielleicht nicht so Aha. gut, aber der kommt noch mal einen Monat über die Runden. Ist das in Ordnung? Did you understand? Ja, yeah, so he says. I'm asked, I was asking him, uh, do you regret any of your commissions you gave him? He says, no. And so I said, so you're so making always good decisions? No, but uh, at least I c the artist gets some money from me. I was quite from, from an arrogant uh, situation, and he's speaking pretty frankly. And this is an exception that Fricke is doing that. So music is not that autonomous. Um, Like Thomas Mann said, it's mach machtgeschützte Innerlichkeit, um, inwardness protected by power. Second, new music can be explicit. One can describe serialism as a maximum abstract music, but also you could interpret it as a musical kind of command economy, of musikalische Planwirtschaft, or of denazification in post-World post -World War Germany, or pointillistic music as the topos of the modern isolation of men. But of course, this is possible only in an extreme professionalized elite academ academic discourse, where the understanding of pitches and durations is so highly educated that one can at all come to such conclusions Again, like Nietzsche said, the advanced listeners are listening to everything symbolic. So my interpretations of serialism is almost cryptic for sure. And serialism is still rather a popular, well-known style in new music. But as a single composer, inventing such an aesthetic without telling people about it would be quite hard to do but there are composers who are doing it. I mean, John Cage, I would say, if you would only listen to the actual music of John Cage, you would not understand this is about chance operations and Zen Buddhism. Mm, or with, and so Cage was very active as a performer. Or also with Marc André's music, from the music itself, you'd, it's not clear that this is meant to be religious music. But now more and more people know about it since it's written in program notes and he's telling people. But since a few years or decades, there is an extended definition of music, the erweiterte Musikbegriff, of course, following Joseph Beuys um, erweiterte Kunstbegriff, um, which means that it has become much more of a practice to include other media, especially video and performance, that give rise to more concepts, meaning text. And that's why I'm integrating, for instance, moderation. Uh, Jenny Walsh is very active as a performer or with um, video or um, yeah, the, including also inviting other real people to be on stage or in the theory opera of um, Patrick Frank that was uh, really a curated piece uh, entirely. Or in the piece product placements which also was mentioned sometimes uh, in the last days this GEMA Aktion where the core was a 33 second long music piece But this only this very small music piece led to printing out 70,200 registration forms, which took me 
six weeks or seven weeks uh, compared to one day of composing. And then I also made a video where a lawyer was explaining the background of uh, copyright. And then I drove with a truck full of this uh, registration forms to the GEMA Generaldirektion in the middle of Berlin. And there's a lot of media and television, radio there. And there was a two hour long discussion then in the house of the GEMA. Um, and also published in the position and then a text about it and the whole position and issue was then about um, copyright. And but all of this I would say is the music piece mm, because it is about music or following an, an extended definition of music. Manus Sangare says that music is the oldest form of multimedia art. So speaking more generally that mm, with speech, with language, you can give music pieces titles, language can be sung, then the performance of music is a performance. Um, rhythms can also be articulated with light or with video. The notation of music is also a graphic practice. Then sound art is more dealing with space than with time. Then the music instruments are also objects, so touching the visual arts and sculpture. And on the conceptual layer, uh, so abstract ideas, one could say you're, you're behind all physical manifestations. And from this uh, mid layer, you can choose whether you use sound or performance or video or whatever, like digital code, which, yeah, the digital code can be a music piece or a, co a cooking book or a video or whatever. So in this sense, is conceptualism a, a um, a universalism. There's the British philosopher Peter Osborne who has the theory that um, in the, the post-conceptual state of art, there's no longer a definition of, uh, of art practices by the medium. So there's no longer music or theater or wish or sculpture, for instance. So everything is conceptual. OK, but is this then now, sh so music, come back, music can be explicit by the use not only of pitches and rhythm, but also the use of text, video, performance, whatever. But now, doing political topics, is this now shallow? And there is good and bad political music, like there is good and bad political new music. In, sorry, there is good and bad political music, like there is good and bad new music at all. So sometimes it needs to be necessary to speak out such tourism. Mm, there is good and bad pieces of Luigi Nono. Um, I mean, I think the still, it is still quite in, the mem in, in our remembrance, the socialist um, realism, which was mostly bad, one could say. Uh, since yeah, from from the authorities, you know, there was a certain sp uh, a specific political program to be put into a sound. Mm. Yeah, and I would say there is intolerance of Luigi Nono is is uh, not very good uh, political piece, but the Fabrica Illuminata is a very good poetical, but political piece. Mm. A, pro a problematic goal might be to preach to anyone. But I would say there are, piece, there are pieces with a specific agenda, and there are great pieces, like Matthias Sparlinger's uh, Orchestra Etudes, Doppelt Beat, Nikolaus Ahuber's Harakiri, or I would say also my piece Charts, Music. You could call them didactical. So, okay, what about didact didacticalism? Um, is teaching learning so bad? I've learned so much from other artists. I wouldn't say that learning or teaching is bad. Maybe it's more about if somebody has to has an interesting new idea to tell people. And then the way how pieces do, say preaching, can be can be good or bad. They can be challenging, they can be beautiful. I mean, also Bach's sacred music was functionalized music, but still not the worst music, I would say. Um, and politics is not so shallow like it is in the election fights, because election fights is all, that's the most 
one of the most terrible parts of democracy uh, when it comes to election, then you read all these shallow slogans. Uh, but politics is more than these slogans, hopefully. Mm. But much more than a specific goal, than teaching the audience about something political, it is, I would say, it is about expression and awareness. Uh, from Seth Kim Cohen in his uh, book Against Ambience from 2013, there's this quote. What I'm pointing at here are practices that engage issues such as institutional critique, gender politics, economics, the AIDS crisis, foreign policy, cultural imperialism, globalism, philosophy, interpersonal and societal power relations, and the distribution of knowledge. And just to be clearer, I'm not suggesting that these engagements need to be explicit or at the level of content. Much of the work I favor merely displays a kind of self-awareness about its own relation to these issues and thus it's best to be transparent with regard to its own status and mechanics in the various structures within which it operates. So let's better call it levels of expression. So, but where there are several levels of expression, there are contradictions. And I think that's a main strategy is working with the contradictions. Christoph Schlingensief said this uh, sentence, heute geht es nicht um Widerstand, sondern um Widersprüchlichkeit. A wordplay in English could be, it's not about opposition, but about contradiction. New music is full of contradictions, and so is democracy. People have the power, power, they can vote, but for instance, they can't vote for abolishing voting. People can vote, but not before the age of 18, so which means um, you have the power, but before you have to have a certain maturity, before, you can, before people can decide on education, they must be educated, etc. So these are the uh, contradictions of, uh, of democracy. And so in the arts, as already was mentioned, Strategies like the performative affirmation or subversive affirmation uh, could be strategies to express uh, such moments, such situations. And I'm in my piece, um, Fremdarbeit, where I hired a Chinese composer and an Indian programmer to imitate my musical style. And then, which has two aspects. On the one hand, it's about um, authorship. So I, I gave them pieces of mine, and they had to make pieces which, which should sound like these pieces, but for a new given instrumentation. And so I received then a score, which should be as if I had written it myself. A very interesting experience for me to get this uh, interpretation of my music. So it's about the question of authorship. Who composed this music then, actually? And the other aspect is that of, um, of exploitation, since these two co-workers were living in poor countries, or, uh, or at least the, 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 level, the level of, uh, of of wages is much lower than in, in middle Europe, so it's cost me about 150 euros, dollars, 150 dollars, whereas I received at least 2,500 euros for that commission. Mm, and here, I would not say that this is, um, there is a choir uh, on to, 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 to preach uh, someone, since uh, it's a depict the, the display of, of the situation. For me as a composer, normally I'm also, I'm, I, I am being hired by, by festivals or whatever. So just to make this obvious and all the computers, they also made in China. But when I made the piece, then were people arguing, how can you do this? Uh, but when you're using the MIDI keyboard, nobody complains. Mm. Yeah, but also with, the, with, that, with that game up piece, uh, for me it is always important to kind of, like Seth Kim Cohen also said, to make transparent your own status. So I could make this, uh, this piece because I am a member of the GEMA. I was criticized in the GEMA, but as a member of the GEMA, and as a member, I uh, wanted to make a statement. Mm, so, yeah, or other examples would be from Bob Ostertag, uh, the piece Sooner or Later, which is a tape piece, uh, that lasts 50 minutes, 
and it uh, bases this one sample of uh, only 30 seconds or 40 seconds, which um, Osotak himself recorded in the um, Civil War of um, San, San Salvador in the, um, in the 1980s. And the sample is an, um, a boy burying his father who was killed in that war. And so this sample is, is very, very touching. So you hear him crying and swearing revenge, and you hear the shovel. And this, out of this 40 second long sample, which in the beginning is played purely, then he makes an entire 50 minute piece, um, almost only with this, only with one exception in the end, but the rest is only this sample. And then applying all sampling techniques from the early 1990s, so making fragments and filtering and layering, and towards the end there's for 10 minutes a A major chord with six ajouté uh, made from, from, one, from one side of that uh, boy, and then it's a kind of minimal music piece. But you know the background of that, of that sample, and then you have to listen to this A major patterns for 10 minutes, and it kind of taunts, taunts yourself. Um, and it's, on, it's, it's free online, it's not very well known, that piece, that's why I always mention it. Uh, or famous uh, action of Christoph Schlingensief, um, Foreigners Go Home, in the middle of Vienna in 2000, uh, he installed a, a container with um, 10 refugees, and then every day, and that was right when, when Big Brother was introduced in television, so, uh, and then people could vote every day, I think one or two had to leave the, the container and go back to their home countries, and only the one winner in the end was, um, could stay in uh, in Vienna. Yeah, and but the strategy of Schlingensief is to say Ausländer raus, refugees go home, or in Zurich once he also did a theater piece and then a right-wing politician said, okay, uh, we, are, we are cutting the subsidies for this piece and the reaction of Schlingensief was, okay, let's make a demonstration, but we make not a demonstration against cutting subsidies, we, we make a demonstration for cutting all subsidies. Yeah? So in this way we affirm the, again, the hyper-affirmation of what we are criticizing. And or Santiago Serra um, making a line on the backs of, of prostitutes for five dollars, a, a tattoo, yeah, which they have for the rest of their lives, so it's almost kind of body damaging for an incredible small amount of money they're doing it for five dollars. Mm. And now I would like to talk about this piece of mine since it was uh, object of discussion a lot. Um, even though you, uh, some of you might know it, I would like to please it play it entirely. It's three minutes and then I would like to give a interpretation. Here's the piece.
So this piece, some people say this is a bad piece, uh, political art at its worst. Um, of course, it's in a way, it's very obvious what's here. It's almost entirely tonal. It's an ABA form. Uh, these statistics are of no surprise, that's for sure. Um, and it is kind of pop piece. It, I had a small hit. It was viewed over 550,000 times on YouTube. But still, do not mistake um, information with interpretation. There is quite some information uh, seen here. Unfortunately, the piece was sometimes played in radio. I would say, do not play it in radio. That's, must n that's, not, that's not my piece. Yeah? Of course, you have to see this additional information. But do not mistake information with interpretation. Now, I would try, like to try to give a bit of an interpretation regard the aesthetics of that software. So I was using a children's composition software, which uh, funny was right at the climax of the financial crisis. In January 2009, Songsmith released this software, and, um, and whatever you enter into it, it creates this happy tune out of it. Mm, and that's why I created this economic, this contradiction of the economic disaster. I've made melodies out of this, um, graphs um, and then fed these melodies into this children's composition software um, which means so every semitone downwards uh, means loss of billions of dollars um, and now we got the let's um, here's the advertising for the software now praise yourself to come up with a campaign for glow-in-the-dark towels. I wouldn't even buy a glow-in-the-dark towel. But if I don't come up with something today, I'm done. I'm singing with my laptop, making up new songs. What are you doing, Lisa? I've never heard you sing. I'm making songs with Songsmith, Dad, because it's the cool new thing. You're writing music? When did you learn how to write music? You sing into a microphone while the drummer plays along. And then when Songsmith makes the music, you're on your way to a song. Now Songsmith comes up with the music that matches your voice. That's perfect. Okay, Dad. so the entire uh, ad goes uh, four and a half minutes. So the story is that yeah, he has to have an idea for advertising for glowing in the dark towels, but even he would not buy glowing in the dark towels. And of course, the story is then he presents at his company the idea of using Songsmith to make an advertising for glowing in the dark towels, and everybody is then um, enthusiastic about that. It's in incredible that this advertising is about advertising, yeah, and uh, the nonsense of advertising even. And then the end of the story is when he comes back home in the evening. And also thanks to Songsmith, now we're singing all the time. And what a happy home we'll have with every word in rhyme. Yeah, and these happy homes they were singing about are these homes built on credits and which leads to the collapse of the system, leads to the financial crisis in 2008, 2009. So the aesthetics of that software is directly connected to um, to a financial crisis, I would say. So at least it makes a lot of sense to use that software. So that would be so a deeper meaning of using, of misusing, yeah, Songsmith. Um, aesthetically, so I use the contradiction between disaster and happiness, just another contradiction like uh, a new music cliche, one could say. 
But now the contradiction is a semantical one and not, uh, for instance, a, a, a thing of, of tempi. So what kind of music is this? Um, is it pop music? Is it new music? It is, is it good music in the sense of pop music? Or is it bad music in the sense of pop music? Is it good music in the sense of new music? Or is it bad music in the sense of, yeah, well, what's that sense of new music then? On which layer is this music? Of course, I am claiming that it is new music, but no longer following a material definition, uh, not an idea of atonality in a narrow sense. But there is this contradiction and an intellectual distance and a multimedia extension. And so would say after this idea, which in my opinion makes sense, so speaking of the Gehalt's aesthetische Wende, at least with using now digital technology, um, then it is a piece of new music, even though it's totally tonal and 4-4 four -four meter. But for pop music, and no pop musician would compose such a piece. The melodies have a much too big, big ambitus. All these melodies, it's mostly more than two octaves. The keys are always, always often changing. Mm. Yeah, so no pop musician would compose such a piece. And also, I would, of course, as a composer, normally not use this software. But something you cannot use, you can misuse. And in this sense, um, one can do it. Mm. Or I would also say, I like to use music that I don't like. And that's a fundamental difference to composers who worked with, with already existing music, like, for instance, um, um, Hans Zender or, or Alfred Schnittke. Hans Zender is quoting other composers, but of course, Beethoven, Brahms, Schumann, his colleagues on the same level. Yeah? Mm. And no, my piece is not music for the charts, but charts for music, which is normally music composed for the pop charts. And of course, it's a collage piece. Also, it's unclear who composed it, um, the managers and politicians and the programmers of the software, or did I compose it? Um, I would say I didn't compose it, I only arranged it. And it's an algorithmic composition, uh, funnily way, it's algorithmic pop music. And maybe also the algorithms of pop music lead to the decline of um, pop music. Mm. Yeah, and in terms of copyright, it's a political issue. Mm, it's, it's, really, it's not solvable whom belongs this piece. And the piece is about worth, about um, value and loss of value, and what's the root of it. And the root of this is also the concept of authorship, of property, of private property. And in terms of, um, uh, yeah, and the, and the same is uh, the question who is responsible for the financial crisis. In the same way, it's not clear who composed that piece. Mm, and the piece was, in a way, very, very expensive to create. Uh, you could say it's the most expensive piece of music in the world, but I could do it on a cheap computer and publish it easily, getting attention worldwide. And again, that's a political thing of the media power of digital revolution. So you could say in the piece is everything wrong. The statistics are also wrong in a way. Never believe uh, statistics. It's a cultural grit. Um, I mean, it's not a technical sonification what I did because I fed everything, all these melodies put into the tonal system. So that's a cultural grit, of course. And uh, once I've, I was invited for managers of Volkswagen, uh, who were recently sued for, for cheating, uh, uh, I showed them the software and I took their chart of the Volkswagen um, Aktie exchange value and then applying different tempi, different styles, I cannot show this now, then you can really, the very same uh, curve can be described as well working or not at all working. Mm. And there are also several instrumental versions, uh, which is also nice. Then the musicians are trying to play in sync with the video. It's always like running behind the money. Yeah? Uh, so this is also a nice performative interpretation of this. On the horizon, I see the version for orchestra and choir and, uh, <laughs> and soloists, uh, New York Philharmonic Orchestra. Mm. Uh, also interesting thing is that um, I are here uh, in the software you can choose the percentage of happiness yeah. mm. <laughs> and, and, and the style. Yeah. Mm. 
Mm, also interesting when when showing the piece in in America, uh, mostly they laugh in the first half. Yeah, Lehman Brothers, ha ha ha. Yeah, Warner Brothers, ha ha. General Motors. But then comes, so to speak, the, the counterpoint with Iraq War, and it's oh, that's not fun anymore. Come on. Uh. Mm, with the styles, um, yeah, I used um, chose different styles. For instance, this this graph where the the false statements of the U.S. government. I chose the string quartet. I want to have this very serious uh, style of string quartet for the governmental um, propaganda. Mm, or, I, or I chose country music for the U.S. that um, samba and rumba. Rumba cup, uh, dance. Dance by couples, so I use that for the porn industry and waltz. Um, and in the middle part, um, okay, here is the choice of choice of. And in the middle part, one the different social functions of music were displayed. Yeah, music can be here to relax, or here this is yeah to dance, and this is footage from a prison where prisoners are dancing the whole day, or casting shows, or the bourgeois concert hall. Mm. Yeah, and music itself is uh, regarded the decline of music industry, maybe due to pop music algorithms, and certainly to the due to the MP3 algorithm, there is this decline of um, of music industry. One could also describe the the melodies um, as with um, with the baroque figurenlehre of exclamatio, anabasis, katabasis, lamento bass, and counterpoint between movements upwards and downwards. Mm, yeah, and parallels, yeah, uh, parallels between statistics of dead bodies in the Iraq and the German um, weapon company selling for Iraq war. Yeah, parallels are wrong in counterpoint, as you might know. So you could also come from this side to make an interpretation. Mm, yeah, or even the DS, the, the, yeah, that's a, the wrong parallels in that piece. Or, or even the DS, 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 the semantics of DS, DS thematics of high and low. We say normally to pitch that pitch is high and low. Um, but for instance, there is Native Americans who speak about left and right, like on the piano. Or ancient Greek, they spoke about sharp and dull. So uh, applying these, these concepts would be, in, again, another interpretation of these processes. So one can could call this piece a kind of um, musical pop art or a satire, I mean, satire is also an art form. Some people said that this is, uh, it's a gag, yeah, it, but it's a very short-term piece. But in fact, due to the periodical crisis of capitalism, with Marx was already describing, again and again, every second year, there is a strong decline in, in, at Wall Street, and again, my piece is played. So um, it is lasting much longer than I expected. So. So much for possible interpretations of that um, three minute long piece. Mm, coming back to my fourth point. Effects of political art exist, but they are not or seldom measurable. That's a very important point. So often in discussions, people say, come on, but it, there's no effect of this. Um, how can you know? I mean, do you, can you have, to, do you have an insight into the heads of people? Effects are not or almost not measurable. Mm, there is no proofs. I like to say nobody can falsify the fact that even the quartet for violin, clarinet, saxophone, and piano, Opus 22 of Anton Weber, also contributed to the fall of the Berlin Wall. Nobody can give a proof that this is not true. So, and that's of course democracy. In democracy, every vote counts. Again, a contradiction of democracy is that as a single person, it would statistically have no effect whether you go voting or not. But anyway, most people hopefully go voting and this, in, in this way democracy works. And in this sense also every piece of music, even of new music, counts. Mm. Uh, which means you do not have to become a politician to act political. Do a contribution in your way, that's democracy. And if you want to express political ideas, you can do it in your art form. It's, it is worth doing it. And now giving a fun fact, or not, or not, not such, no, not so fun fact. In 2008, I made this piece at the GEMA and there was no direct effect. <laughs> the piece was not registerable, 
the, nobody really looked at these 70,000 registration forms. That was clear, that's impossible. And that's not the goal to, to do that. The goal was to change the system. And two months ago, there was the final decision at the German Bundesverfassungsgericht, the highest German court, a case which took about 10 years, I think, the rapper Moses Pelham used a one second long sample from Kraftwerk. And so it came to court. And Pelham, he continued fighting for his rights. And now the highest court in Germany, they spoke the first, the first time in German history, they spoke this law that it's right for, for Pelham to use this one second long sample. And now all in the fairy tone that was um, immediately described as this is really now a turn in, in, in German law about remix culture. And also GEMA is not totally stiff since also since spring this year they decided to include Creative Commons system, a bit at least of the Creative Commons system in the whole GEMA system. Also a point I was fighting for since 2008. They're doing it now. So there are effects sometimes. I've made this statement of the in the beginning of the documentary on my piece Fremdarbeit, and now, believe it or not, um, Gordon Kampe found out that the, the elections for the FDP, the German more right-wing um, party, and since <laughs> the premier Fremdarbeit, I leave it to you. It's, but <laughs> Um, Pablo Picasso, the quote of Pablo Picasso said, I can paint a painting and right after painting it, putting it into a drawer and still it changes the world, um, which can be interpreted esoterically that this painting inside the drawer still has its, its waves spreading out. Well, but, okay, but you could also at least say that, of course, the painting at least changed Picasso himself. And that's also a change of the world. But also, um, I would say expert culture is also important in democracy. So this closed circle, it is also a bit strange that as the composers we learn um, to, yeah, we study for, for five or ten years. And after these ten years, it would be strange if then we would do things which everybody on the street would, would understand uh, easily. So there must also be something like expert culture, like what we are doing here in Darmstadt, of course. Mm, since mm, mankind needs experts in all fields and also in the arts. There must be an instance in society of which society knows, although they don't consume it or don't understand it, but at least they know they are there. There are these crazy people doing this crazy stuff, and um, this must also be there. Um, Boris Kreuz me referred to this interesting survey that circa 80% of New Yorkers say that they are New York because of the big amount of museums and theaters, but also 80 to 90% say that they've never been to any theater or museum. And again, it's not necessarily about change. It can also be about understanding something, about appropriation, and about expression, about awareness, about perception, like other pieces of art um, are doing. Coming to the last, to the most silly point at the end, um, yeah, it's not authentic, it's non-credible, it's only fashion, it benefits only the career. Let me make this variation. Oh, Beethoven was such a fraud. He wrote his Ninth Symphony with the Ode to Joy, but in fact, he did it all just for his career. So that is, of course, um, I mean, you could say, we are living in capitalism. So we are living in the in institutionalized new music world. Hence, we have to start a career. You do not get um, a performance with a big attention, which costs a lot of money, if you do not prove that you're a good artists, that you're worth doing it. So you have to make these steps of career. And so which means every activity you do can be denounced as being for your career. Oh, your haircut, that's for your career, yeah. And so a good piece, a successful piece, yeah, it's ben it benefits the, the artists since normally 
when there is an artwork, there's also an artist being part of that artwork. So if the artwork is successful, also the artist is successful. That's the system, but that's, that cannot be criticized then especially for political music. So, well, yeah, let's keep that. So such an argument, I would say, is total bullshit. That's only expression of envy and the sign of pettiness. It's beyond an earnest intellectual discourse. Forget it. End of discussion. Thought terminating cliche pseudo argument. Coming to an end herewith, I do not formulate any normativities, and I'm and not because I'm such a nice guy. Uh, my personal opinion, as a side note, is that anybody should do what he or she wants. Uh, there should be total abstract music as well as very explicit ideas in the art. And for me as a composer, I liked to, to, do, to be in this entire spectrum, to do things for an audience of 30 people and only 20 of them understand it and only 10 of them like it. And on the other hand, trying to make pieces which in best case have half a million of clicks on YouTube. Mm. But. That's totally irrelevant here since I am only a composer. I have only the mind over my own sheet of paper. And I, as an object and subject of politics in democracy from time to time, I feel the need to express political things. Whether they have an effect or not, I don't know, but first of all, there's the need to express it. But it's not my job to evaluate any other work than my own, so I don't do that. There are norms, but these norms are defined by those who are in charge, the curators. They define the degree and the percentage of politicalness in new music by choosing this or another composer to be played. And it is strange that those who are in charge are almost totally out of the discourse. I think that must be changed, and those on top of the hierarchy won't start this process. Thanks.